Um, my name is Chris Berger. I've been at the Copley Society, I want to say maybe four years, five years. Uh, Paige or Susan might know. Uh, I don't know why they would, but I, <laughs> I honestly forget the year that I joined. But um, yeah, I've uh, been missing my like, you know, ever, every few months trips to the gallery. So I'm excited that we're back open. Um, it would have been fun to be able to do this in person, but um, I'm excited to be able to, to do this on here with you all. Um, right now I'm in my studio in Salem and it's kind of scorching hot because it's an attic. So if I, if I seem to be glistening on the Zoom, uh, that's why. Um, so I wanna get started with um, kind of the, the basics of Instagram um, and not so much how to use it, but just some things to keep in mind while we go through this. Um, presentation. So as I'm sure most of you guys are aware of, um, Instagram is a super powerful tool that um, for, for basically anyone trying to, you know, get their work out there, especially artists. Um, it's just really like visual medium as far as social media goes. So um, we as artists are very kind of suited for this app. Um, what this present, one of the caveats I want to give at the top is this isn't so much going to be a presentation about how to use Instagram um, at like a, a basic level. I'm not going to be covering, you know, like how to do posts um, and the, the real basics there. I think there are better resources for that than me. Um, so I definitely, if you're not comfortable with the app or you've never used it, I definitely recommend, um, you know, Going, I think like YouTube has a lot of good resources on how to use it. So this is more so much about how to use um, Instagram strategically, um, how to grow your following and how to you know, use it uh, to, to benefit your career as an artist. Um, another important thing I want us to think about is that uh, using it, while it is a really powerful tool, I do think um, it's important to have fun uh, meaning that uh, it's really easy to become really kind of like obsessed with Instagram as it is with any other social media. Um, so like I'd, I'd have to be honest and say that like I find I have times where I'm looking at the app too much um, and it can become, it can change from a tool into a a bit of a distraction. So I just want everyone to keep in mind that success on Instagram is not success as an artist. Um, it's merely a tool that you can use um, to, to help your career. Um, and uh, it's also a great means to engage with the artistic community, right? Like social media gets dragged a lot um, for kind of some one of the reasons I just stated, but on the other hand, it is a really great way to connect with other artists and kind of find a community. Um, as I'm sure all of you have experienced being an artist is a pretty, uh, it can be like a, a pretty lonely career, right? You're spending a lot of time by yourself in the studio. Um, and one of the great things about social media is that you can actually kind of connect with other people that share share what you like when um there aren't a ton of artists out there for you to just like bump into on the sidewalk right um and then i also wanted to cover that i'm going to give some tips on how to grow your following you know and everyone you know the goal seems to be to have you know 10,000 20,000 100,000 followers um one thing I do want to, you to also keep in mind in that is that like a bigger following isn't always better. Um, if you are able to cultivate a small following of really engaged people, um, that in the end will be more valuable than, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that are, you know, are, are barely engaged with what you're doing. And, um, you know, especially when it comes to selling something expensive like art, and making connections with people um, you want you know you want to have like good quality relationships on there and then finally the last thing I want to cover is that there aren't really any shortcuts this isn't going to be like a how to hack the system type uh, 
conversation about Instagram, you'll you'll see a lot of like people kind of trying to sell these these like get followers quick schemes and these secrets and you know clickbaity ideas. Um, in my experience, um, what I've found is that there are like legitimate means to build a following, and and um, as artists, we we already have a lot of the tools that you need to to build a good healthy Instagram following. So um, we're going to start with just some like general tips for posting that I've found um, before we get to the, the very clickbaity headline that I gave, which is my three most important things about um, growing an Instagram following. So the first general tip I want to give is that the algorithm is real. I'm sure you guys have heard about um, this Instagram algorithm. Um, so the reason your posts either feel like they're being shown to a lot of people or no one has to do with Instagram's algorithm. So what, it's, what it does is basically combs through posts and it tries to show people what it thinks that they want to see. So essentially, the more popular something is that you post, like then it will show it to more people. Um, so basically like, you know, likes beget likes, comments get more comments, follows get more follows. Um, what this means is that you want to post content that the algorithm uh, likes. So um, you want to encourage comments. If someone, if people are commenting on one of your posts, you want to reply to it. Um, and you especially want to do this like pretty quickly after you post something, just so that it, it feels like this, this piece of content that you put out there is popular and people are interested in it. And therefore the, the algorithm will start showing it to maybe people that don't follow you, or it will start appearing on people's explore page, things like that. Um, one th thing the algorithm also does um, on the other than showing people your stuff is it hides your stuff from people. Um, and that's called throttling. Um, so throttling is, it's a real thing. Um, and what the app is doing is it, if it senses that something is like spam or trying, obviously trying to like sell a product, um, it will show it to less people. So the screenshot you see on this slide, it was a, a um, kind of like a little ad I made for a print release that I was doing um, this month. Um, Unbeknownst to me, and I learned this from a, um, a friend that works in influencer marketing, if there's a certain percentage of text in one of your posts, meaning that thing that says May 21st, limited edition, blah, 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 the app, the algorithm actually can like notices that and hides that post from people. Um, and that applies to Facebook as well. There's like this... Um, I, I don't know if it's like an 80 20 rule. There's a rule that basically they crawl posts, and, and if you're filling your posts with texts, it's going to say, like, oh, this is an ad, this is spam, um, and it's going to hide it from people. So that post that you see on the right was maybe the, got the least amount of uh, exposure of anything I've posted in the past few years. Um, and I, I wish I had known that before I did that, but you live and you learn. So I thought that was a useful piece of information to share with you. Um, the same goes for in your caption. If you use words like sale, order, buy, follow, like these, these words also trigger uh, the algorithm to start suppressing that post. Um, so it's just something to think about. Um, so the, the algorithm gives and it takes away. So um, what you really want to do is kind of Think about how, um, how the app is going to react to what you're posting. Um, another general tip, and, and these are kind of, these are a bit rough shot. There's no theme to these tips. These are just things that I wanted to cover on the top before we really get into it. Um, use hashtags that are relevant to your content. Um, so hashtags are essentially the way that your post is going to find its way to strangers, to people that don't follow you, to people that are just playing around on the app. Um, you can use up to 30 of them on, per post, um, and I try to use at least 10. Um, the method that I do for hashtags 
is I kind of keep a bank of them in the notes app on my phone that I edit and change, update, whatever. But I basically just keep them there so that I can copy them. And then when I post something, I can just paste them into the first comment. Um, that saves me time with having to like manually type out hashtags. I'm super slow at typing on my phone. Um, so it's just a nice thing that you can kind of prepare um, for each post. Um, the hashtags that you use are also important. So you want to think about ones that are relevant to the thing that you, the, the post that you're doing, um, to the art community on Instagram, maybe to the location your, your, um, painting is of or where your studio is. Um, you really need to kind of like play with it. I usually do a mix of really general hashtags and then I'll throw a few specific ones in that I'm like, oh, maybe if someone, you know, this painting's of like the Redwoods, maybe I'll just put in like Redwoods and maybe someone will stumble upon it, things like that. Um, but the key is just like, look at what other artists that are having success are doing and look at what hashtags they're using. Like a lot of the ones that I use often, I've just like seen other people use um, and they seem to be relatively popular. Um, the, the one in the screenshot, this is like, there are remnants of me doing being kind of lazy about this. You have like stuff about the Muir Woods and then there's a hashtag about the Northern Lights, which is definitely from a different post that I did that was of the Arctic. So um, yeah, yeah, if you want to like clean those up, think about what you're putting in. And then um, if you're comfortable using moving between apps on your phone, um, definitely keep a bank of 10 to 30 of them in a notes app or in an email draft somewhere where you can easily just copy it and paste it immediately after when you post. Okay, another general tip, take full advantage of your bio and the link in your bio. Um, as you can see in mine, I've tried to put uh, as much useful information in my bio as possible. So. Um, this is what I currently have. I do change it up like every few months, depending on what I've got going on. Um, here, I've tagged uh, the two galleries that currently have some of my work hanging. Um, and I've got where I'm, you know, like where I'm painting out of and uh, a link to my website. Um, this is just an easy way to kind of quickly get attention and send people to the galleries. Or, you know, if you teach a workshop, maybe maybe you're associated with a, a place that also has another Instagram page. Um, you just wanna use that area to kind of share, I guess, like the headlines, what you want people to see about you when they first see you. Um, if I have a big show coming up, then I'll use that space just to say like, you know, X show opens at whatever gallery. I'm on the date and then I might even change the link to lead just to that gallery. Um, so the link. So a lot of people have started to use that link to bring people to like the to as much information as possible. Um, because Instagram only gives you space for one link, what people have started to do is use that almost as just a portal to a menu. So um, there, there seem to be three popular things people are doing. So um, you'll see the Copley Society, that one, that screenshot in the middle. They're using uh, LinkedIn.bio. What that one does is you can associate a URL to each one of your posts. Um, you can also put a little button at the top that says visit website. Um, my one of my favorites that you'll see this gallery that I work with Nakata uses is called Linktree. Um, so basically you click their little link and it brings you to this menu. And then within that menu, you can put more URLs. So this is really nice if you want to be people to be able to like sign up for your mailing list, visit the galleries that you you have work at, um, sign up for a workshop, um, whatever. And then what I've done, um, if, if you're a little bit more comfortable tech-wise, is I've basically built my own link tree on my website. 
Um, this takes a little bit more know-how, but um, I just liked that the uh, I could customize the look a little bit more. So you can see when you click on my link from my profile page, it brings you to a thing that says like shop at each of the galleries, information about the print I was selling, uh, just a link to my website, and then a link to my mailing list. Um, so basically, you, you want to think about like, you know, where do you want to funnel people that say someone lands on your Instagram profile, you want them to follow you, but you also want to funnel them to, to valuable places, right? Um, I would say if you're, if you're just getting kind of started with this idea, I definitely would recommend Linktree. Um, it's, a, it's free, which is nice. Um, and you can basically put, I think it's like up to five or six um, different menu items that people can click on. Um, so if, if you don't, if you feel like you only have one place that you really want people to go, say you have a workshop coming up, um, you can also kind of skip the middleman and just put the sign up for that in your Instagram profile link. But this is a bit of a cleaner way. Um, and a lot of people are starting to, to move in that direction. Okay. So here are my final five little general tips before we get into the, the big themes of things. Um, post when your followers are online. Um, this, while Instagram moved away from sharing things exactly when you post them, so that it, used to, it used to post things chronologically, meaning um, if I posted at 4 p.m., my post would show up to my followers at 4 p.m., and if they logged in at five, it would be it would be buried. They'd they'd only see things that were from five. You know, they'd see things chronologically. Now, what it does is, if I post at four p.m., um, if someone is really kind of like engaged with my work generally, they're gonna see mine first, even if I posted it a few hours ago. That's good, um, but it's still good to kind of have your things, your posts, be really fresh. Um, so. That means most people use Instagram around the beginning of the workday and the end of the workday. Um, so what I like to do is post around between like four and six, generally around five. Um, the, not only does that kind of like hit a time when a lot of people are on Instagram, it's also just like better for me to be able to have a full workday in the studio without stressing about posting something on Instagram. And like I said, it can also be a distraction. So I don't, I, I'm sure I'm not the only person that like, you know, shares a piece of art on Instagram or Facebook and then just like refreshes and sees like how it's performing, um, which is, I, I try to avoid that habit, but I also know that I'll do it. So I try to save that for when I'm not actually painting, when I'm not working, I post it at the end of the work day and, and let it do its thing. Um, the next is don't be spammy. Um, one post and some stories each day is plenty, if not a lot. Uh, I mean, I, I don't even post once a day. Um, that said, you, you want to think about, you don't want people to get like fatigued from the stuff you're putting out. So even if you have like four new paintings that you're super excited about, like hold on to them. Um, there's no need to just like post all this stuff all at once. Um, just consider that. I'm sure that's, I'm sure that's a, a no-brainer to most of you. Um, but, but what we'll learn later on in this presentation is like having new fresh content is like extremely valuable. So you don't want to just like throw it all out there immediately. You want to hold on to this stuff. Um, the other thing is to consider a creator account. So the, the insights, that little screenshot you see on the right, um, that's a feature that gets unlocked if you, if you sign up for one of their Instagram's like creator accounts. Um, it, it's, uh, it's not like you don't get to pay for it or anything. It's just like a, a way that they want to identify people that are like artists or musicians or, um, you know, people that, that are going to be like creating more professional content with them and people that care about kind of how many people they're reaching, who, you know, it gives you insights into like 
where, what countries and cities people are following you from, what gender, what age group, like age range. Um, so there's a lot of like cool features in there for those of you that are more like analytically minded or just want to see kind of like the, the trends. Um, what you want to avoid when you're doing like the creating the creator account is make sure you select creator and not business um, because business accounts do from what I hear from from um, friends that work in the in the biz, in the in the like social media space business accounts do get throttled because Instagram expects them to be paying for ads um, whereas creator accounts do not so I've only seen I've only seen benefits since I switched to a creator account. Um, the other idea to consider is using new features. So you, I'm sure you guys that use Instagram a lot have seen that like they really want you to use reels. They really want you to do stories. They really want you to post videos. Um, so again, keep in mind like what does Instagram want? It wants like people to hang out on their app and use their new features that rip off other other social media so like instagram created reels to because tiktok got really popular um therefore they want it to succeed so if you create reels they're going to show those to more people um and you're going to benefit from that all that said like reels specifically that feature like i i have never done that um it's just like i don't know <laughs> all the power to you if you feel comfortable with whatever that is, but I'm mostly posting videos, stories, and uh, images. But, but it is something to keep in mind if, if you look at Reels and you're like, oh, this is a cool way to post a 15 second video, like you'll probably benefit from that. They'll probably show it to more people than if you did it as a normal post. And then the last general tip is don't pay for followers and be skeptical of anyone saying, um, that they're going to help you on Instagram for money. Um, I, even to this day, like I still get a lot of like direct messages from random, who knows, like strange accounts that are just basically like, oh, for only, you know, a hundred dollars, like we'll, we'll, you know, give you thousands of followers or for only ten dollars, we'll repost one of your paintings, and like it will get seen by so many people. Um, this is like uh, usually BS. Um, a lot of the accounts that look like they have like you know a hundred or two hundred thousand followers that repost other people's art, um, it seems tempting, right? You're like, oh well, they'll they'll share one of my paintings, and two hundred thousand people will see it. Um, what I would encourage you to do is like go to that page and see how many people are liking and commenting on those posts because if someone has 200,000 followers but when they post a painting like you know 100 people like it then clearly something's a bit off you know there are not 199,000 people that just didn't happen to like that painting so um just be skeptical of that type of stuff it, I know it can probably be tempting to you know oh it's only 20 bucks like blah 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 but just uh approach that stuff with uh with skepticism and and uh know that your own you know the quality of your work and using instagram in a smart way is gonna be a lot more useful than than any shortcuts like that so that's kind of my like you know quick blast through these these tips that um i think should hopefully are helpful to you guys um but now i want to get into my like my own experience and and this, while this does sound kind of clickbaity, the three things that I've found most important, like, you know, you won't believe this food, what it will do to your gut or whatever, I don't know. But um, it, it, there are really like three things that I have found that actually um, I think are the reason why my Instagram like blew up over the past few years. Um, so quality, consistency, and personality. I'm going to kind of dive dive into each of these and what I mean by each of these. Um, so quality, um, nothing beats great content. Um, this is basically, you've, I've kind of hinted at this earlier on, but, but you need to think about how Instagram as an app makes money um, um, and what you're doing to, 
to help them and how they will help you. Um, so basically, Instagram makes money by keeping people on the app, right? Um, they see ads, people pay for ads. They, they want people to hang out on the app. And what makes people hang out on the app is like great content, right? Um, so it's pretty simple. If you create great content, you're kind of working Instagram, right? Like you are the employee that's like putting cool stuff on their app. That's therefore keeping people on their app. That's therefore making them money. So if you are showing cool content, then Instagram is going to reward you by showing your stuff to more people. Um, it's like, it's very much like a, in the most positive way it's a symbiotic relationship um i'm sure you could frame it as a lot darker than that um that you're you're working for free for a giant company but um that is kind of how it works that's the reality of it um so one thing we all have going for us is that as artists like what we are already in the business of creating beautiful things right we're already in the business of creating like i hate the word but content um so what we need to think about is how do we translate the beautiful work that we do on canvas or on clay and in, in camera um how do we translate that into captivating digital work right um so the way i think about it is is you know what can i do to make how can I use my artistic skills to like create a good Instagram post or create Instagram content? Um, the, the, on the, the most basic side is like, I use a professional, like a, a pretty high quality camera to take uh, the majority of my Instagram photos. Um, and I like, I do take it quite seriously. Um, the same way that I would approach photographing my work for like a juried show. Um, basically like, People notice that type of stuff. Um, and if you, if, if we're already kind of have the tools of, you know, being able to show our work to galleries or juries or, um, you know, friends and family, then take, take that same like serious approach to creating Instagram posts. Um, the other thing quality wise that you should consider is what do your followers want? um so basically like you know what's my goal with with following this if i was to guess i would say that of my of the people following me on instagram i think it's like a pretty even split of people who are painters that are kind of like interested in my work and like getting inspiration from it just liking my work um and then or, or, you know, like people that are learning how to paint that have found some artists that they like. And it's people that are not painters that might be interested in buying work or they just follow a few artists on their Instagram because, you know, they, they like art or they sell my work to the gallery or something. Um, so I want to like kind of think about when I'm, when I'm posting work and when I'm like using Instagram, I want to think about, you know, who is my audience and how, how do all those people kind of benefit from, from what I'm posting? Um, so things to think about is, are you, if you, if in your ideal world, if you're growing your Instagram, like do you just want it to be ideally people that are gonna buy your work or maybe you teach workshops? So like, you know, are you interested in getting new students? Um, and like when you when you think about these questions, when you think about what your goal is from like this audience that you're you're building, um, then you want to think about how does each post kind of get, provide something to those people. Um, so say say you do t teach workshops, right? Like most likely the people that are following you or the people you want to attract will want to see maybe your process. Um, so you could consider that are posting things like, you know, short little clips of you painting or time lapses, you know, things that will be attractive to people that are trying to learn how to paint, right? Um, if you're just looking for collectors, maybe you think about not, not only are you posting like finished work, but maybe you're posting a little bit more kind of like lifestyle stuff, like trying to like make more of a personal connection with the people following you so that they're, 
you know, more interested in um, collecting your work. So these are just like some ideas that you, you always want to, you know, consider um, when you're thinking about your audience, right? Um, what I tend to do is mostly, I mostly am geared towards like, hopefully, getting collectors. So I don't post a ton of, you know, works in progress or um, videos of myself working. That said, when I do, they get like a ton of action, like a lot more, which tells me that a lot of people are like, you know, either hobbyist painters or, you know, students or just people that are kind of trying to get inspiration. Um, so it's just a thing to think about. Just think about who your audience is. And, and it kind of goes back to that thing of the small following of really like connected dialogue in people is, is more valuable than a big audience of people that aren't going to sign up for a workshop, aren't going to buy your work, like who knows what they're there for. So um, it's a thing to think about. Um, that, yeah, that video on the right, that screen cap on the right was just a, uh, uh, it was like randomly, I was like, okay, I'll just film myself painting this morning. Um, and yeah, it got like a, a ton of action. So something to think about. People like, people do like to see your process. Um, I think it's, you know, when I'm on the app, I definitely, as a painter myself, I find myself stopping and kind of watching people's little videos. So, oh, but also keep in mind, don't give away all your secrets. Don't post give away a ton of free content i get a lot of requests of people being like do you have a youtube channel like show me more of this painting and and i do consider you know i still do workshops and teach every now and then so i'm not just gonna kind of like give away that stuff so give people just a little taste something that will keep their attention for a minute or so and make them want to keep following you okay so the next thing is consistency um this is Consistency, I think, potentially is the most important thing. Obviously, quality is important. We want to create like great content that people are attracted to that Instagram wants to promote. In terms of gaining followers and growing my account, consistency, I think, was like the biggest key. If, if you have one takeaway from this um, talk, um, that's kind of what it is. So I'll do a little bit of story time right now. So um basically I've, I've had instagram since i don't know since who knows when like 2012 or something um basically since i started you know painting more seriously and um five seven eight years something like that it was just kind of whatever like i couldn't get more followers i i felt like my work was pretty good i was like you know, I was doing a lot of the other stuff that I was talking about quality, you know, quality wise, I was like, you know, using a good camera, getting good photos of my work, like posting like little videos in my painting. And it was growing, but like not quickly, like it, it was not growing fast. And it was like, uh, I was like, pretty frustrated, because as I'm sure a lot of you out there are like, my work's good, like people like it, I don't get why it's like, for whatever reason, like it's just not gaining traction or you see other people on Instagram with a ton of followers and you're like, you know, you're kind of baffled by, by what's going on here. So basically at the beginning of lockdown last year, um, it was like March of 2020, I had had a workshop planned at COSO. I had like some sh shows like hopefully planned for later that year and everything kind of shut down. So I started just kind of like, thinking outside the box is like, oh, I'll do like a tiny commissions. Like maybe I can get some work doing that. Everyone's at home. It could be fun. Um, so I did this thing that was basically like, you know, pay what you can minimum of $75 and I'll, I'll paint like a, you know, like a photo sized painting of, of whatever you send me within reason, um, little five by seven or six by six painting. Um, so at that time I had like a few thousand followers followers um and and you know people's requests started coming in so um I, I ended up with like 50 or 60 so because there's our teeny little paintings I was able to do about one a day sometimes like one and a half a day um and what I found is that because as I started posting a new little painting each day 
you could literally see like this this momentum building like each one was getting more likes and with the, with that like i started getting like more follows and it was like you know you know this like cascading effect and it started growing exponentially and i was shocked i was like the paintings aren't necessarily better than anything i've ever painted they're teeny and they're of people's like random photos like a lot of them were strange um but I what what I think happened is that I was posting like fresh content each day around the same time and the the app the algorithm just like saw that like this content being like churned out and it wasn't just like you know I wasn't recycling stuff it was like people seemed to be kind of engaging with it um it was you know I, they were getting comments so so I basically through that exercise over three months I went from you know like two or three thousand followers to like 20 um the work started getting kind of like reposted around and you know um by the end of it like the first few things I posted had like you know 100 or so likes and then it was like randomly I'd get like 8,000 likes on something so it was just kind of there was no like magic or shortcut to it like I didn't really do anything different uh, the only thing that I was doing different was you know like posting something new each day um now I'm sure you all know like that's much easier said than done like I can't even remotely do something like that now um you know like I'm I'm lucky if I have a new painting like you know once a, to post like once a week if I can even share it if it's not a commission or something so um kind of with that in mind try to think outside the box of like how can I if you've been painting for I tell this to my father-in-law who's been a professional painter for like 30 40 years like he has thousands of images of his paintings like he could post post a new painting each day for for like years and never run out right so if you feel like you have like this backlog of work or if you if you're a pretty like prolific painter like consider you know how can I consistently post maybe on just on weekdays or even just like three times a week can I kind of like have some sort of fresh content to post um because that that leads us to our next slide which is when I look at the the like analytics of my page there is this like momentum that that happens um when I go for like a few weeks or days like the engagement with anything new that I post dips significantly but if if I like bring it back and start posting each day again or I post a few popular things like all of a sudden this like it takes off again and I'm like gaining followers like you know hand over fist so there definitely seems to be like this this momentum aspect so whether it's kind of like doing a little challenge to yourself like oh i'm gonna do like a, a tiny gouache painting each day or i'm gonna do a sketch each day i mean you're all like talented out there so i think like our our like you know throw away things like a sketch or an old painting like that that's like pretty exciting stuff for other people to see so it's a thing to consider um but I do know that like if if you are posting once a week or once every two weeks, like it's there's not it's your account isn't gonna grow. Like it's it's just kind of like that's the the unfortunate reality. And and that all goes back to the thing of like Instagram as an app is is interested in like new, more, better content, keeping people on the site. So um again, it's like a much easier said than done thing. Um but it, it is helpful um, to, to at least know that that's like a big part of growing your account. Um, like cut to me today, I'm not doing like a teeny commission every day, but when I do say I have a show and I have like 12 paintings ready to go, like I will kind of like space those out and post one new painting a day, you know, for, for a few weeks and that momentum starts to build again and the account starts to grow. Another thing consistency wise is also just the consistency of the look and feel of your Instagram page. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, using like similar formatting, similar backdrops or like kind of a consistent color palette um, on your page. Um, so you'll see on these images on my right. One is just like of a section of my feed from, I don't know when, like a few months ago 
And then these three squares you see are kind of like the, I guess like the visual language I've like established for my Instagram page. So I use like this wooden backdrop a lot. I use like this painted white wooden backdrop. And then I'll post like pictures of, of like in the studio pictures. And I make sure that those are all like similarly like white balanced and kind of have like a similar um, photographic quality. Um, and what that does is it kind of creates, it just creates a really like professional look to your page. Um, again, like I, I like hate myself for using so many of these like buzzwords, but it does give you like a, a personal brand, like a visual brand behind your work. Um, so, so in the end, like what that achieves is it, it does like make people more likely to follow you if, because your page looks like it's just, it's like a professional artist account that's sharing their work. It's not just like some stranger where it's like, here's like my nephew and here's my cat and then here's dinner and then here's one of my paintings, you know? Um, if you stumble, no matter how cool that painting is, you're gonna be like, oh, is this weird? Like, am I just like following this random person's Instagram account? Like, do they want me following it? Um, so consider that stuff. Um, and if again like if you're if you're like so inclined like what i'll often do is i basically have set um photos of like these backdrops with different sized canvases on them and i can just like quickly photoshop a new painting onto that backdrop um and then it's just like a a way to keep things consistent so i don't need to lug out like this this wooden like little false wall thing that I made. Um, but again, like, even as I talk through it, this sounds intense. Like I've got backdrops that I've like built for Instagram, but it is like, you know, it is like a serious tool and marketing tool that does help that I've sold a lot of work and it's like, it's very useful to have like a very professional looking page. So um, as artists, we're all kind of like small business owners. So it's, it's definitely a, a free marketing tool that is worth a little bit of time and effort to to create, um, to make professional. All right, I've lost my thing. Okay, um, yeah, and this is just, you know, a further example of kind of this visual language. So like I said, I've got like this white thing and I've got this uh, wooden backdrop and you can see I've even like, it's a good way to, if you wanna post the same painting, you know, more than once, cause who knows it didn't sell or, you announce the show and then you want to show the work again using kind of this these like tools can kind of change things up but keep things specific uh, specific to your page okay and then the final of the three things is personality um so i've gone over kind of making your instagram look professional and talking about the, like don't post your like your dinner alongside your paintings um but there is something to be said for bringing some of your personality to your page um that's like a you know that's like kind of the root of all social media especially instagram it's like you're getting a window into someone's world um and a lot of people uh i don't know if if the people on here would would agree, but like a lot of people think that like the the artist's life is an interesting life, and to get a window into that, that world is interesting, right? Um, so while this like personal content might not perform as well, like if I post a picture of like you know um, out this is like oh as we were out skiing or I'm out getting photos or um, here's like. I don't know, just like anything that I find interesting, it won't perform as well as just like a straight up painting, but it does kind of those the paintings um, to give like some insight into who you are as an artist. And as as I'm sure you guys know, um, as as people selling art and people that probably buy art, there is something to be said for like having feeling some sort of personal connection to an artist, right? Like you want to feel like you kind of know them, you're buying a bit of their story in a way. Um, and, and I think 
that conversion of someone from just like a follower on social media to someone that's actually going to email you and be like, I want that painting. I think a lot of that has to do with like, you know, them wanting to support you and seeing like, oh, this is what their studio looks like. Oh, like, you know, they seem like a, a person that's out in, out in nature a lot painting or blah, blah, blah. So that's something to consider to sprinkle like bits of your personality as much as you're comfortable with, right? Um, the last poll that I have on the slide is like, consider that people write biographies about artists. Like, you know, we're not all Sargent or, you know, Hemingway. We don't all have like George O'Keefe. Like we don't have these like wild, interesting lives, but like people are interested in what it's like to be an artist, right? Um, I'm sure you've all found that just in life, right? At the dinner party, people are like, oh, you're an artist, you must be poor um but no, they, they do they are interested in in kind of what you've got going on so if you can sprinkle some of that into your social media I think um it's it's definitely a benefit I know the artists that I follow there are a handful that it's just fun to see you know like what are they up to where do they take photos you know what's their studio look like stuff like that um a good place to share some of your personality on Instagram is in the stories feature so um for those that aren't super familiar, stories are like the little 17 second video clips that you can you can post that show up in the little circles at the top of the app um, and they disappear after 24 hours. So because that doesn't like stay permanently on your page, it, it won't like disrupt the professional look of your page. Um, it is a really good space to share just like, you know, little snapshots that like I, I do just use my iPhone for stories. Um, it's way simpler. I'm not like taking out the camera and the lighting for, for that stuff. It's more ephemeral, but it is a good way to just show like little peaks at like your studio. Like I did a really weird way of composing a painting. So I was like sharing it and people were, you know, kind of making fun of me, but also very interested in how I had gone about doing that. Um, I'll do it to like, if I'm doing something else that's like relatively creative, like, oh, I built this thing in the backyard, check it out. Um, that type of stuff, while like, you know, the, the bulk of your followers aren't gonna go crazy over it, you do find that like, you know, the, the few collectors that are following you, like they might respond because they feel like, you know, they're like kind of friends with you. They're like, you know, more interested in actually what you're doing. Um, so again, it's just like a, a great space to show some personality um, and it won't necessarily interrupt your, your feed. So that's a lot. I tried to be relatively quick, but it still took 50 minutes. So um, yeah, I think uh, if, if Paige wants to start kind of going through questions, um, I'm happy to answer stuff. Hopefully that wasn't a whirlwind of information and hopefully it was somewhat useful to you guys. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we, if you want to stop screen sharing up to you, we could see everybody. Oh yeah. Let me do that. Yeah. Okay. Did I do it? Yeah, you did. Okay. Cool. Um, hi everybody. <laughs> Um, well, first off, thank you so much, Chris, um, that I learned a lot. I'm sure everybody else did. Um, and I will start um, looking over some of these questions. So there's a few questions um, about creator accounts. Mm. Um, so a lot of people asking, you know, where is the creator account located? Can you switch from a business to a creator account, um, mm -hmm. et cetera? Yep. Okay. So the i do think it's it's hard to know because i'm already in the creator account uh like system but i do think when you choose between like uh, personal and business then there's like a subcategory of business that is creator i'm not like a hundred percent positive about that um no no if you know definitely tell me because I, yeah. I did it maybe well, a, a few years ago so i couldn't tell you yeah no i noticed the questions um while you were um giving the talk so i kind of just looked into it a little bit um and it is it's pretty easy um so when you're on your own page on instagram 
um, you'll see the three lines in the top right hand corner. Um, and once you click those, you can click settings. And from there, you are able to go to um, the account button. It's like kind of towards the bottom after you click the settings. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see switch account type. Um, and then from there, you can decide if you wanna to switch to a personal or a business account. And if it's asking you to switch from a personal to a business account, chances are you're already a creator account. Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay. Wow. And you, you'll know if you have that, if there's like a little, like underneath mine, it says like artist in like light gray. It's like not, not a thing I can edit, but yeah, I think like t technical questions like that, I definitely would recommend like give it, give it a quick Google and they'll be like, they'll have like step-by-step -step instructions, I'm sure, right? Um, but yeah, the, the creator account is, I was like hesitant to switch to it because I had heard that like, you know, your, your account will start getting kind of like throttled um, when you switch from personal to creator. But um, yeah, I, I was told by, by someone that works in like influencer marketing that that doesn't happen, that like they, they actually prefer people to have creator accounts that are legitimately creators, artists and whatnot. Um, and then I did have a question from Tim and Tim, feel free to interrupt me if I'm interpreting this wrong. Um, but Tim asks, um, essentially, is it, are you more rewarded for posting original content than you are, um, from sharing another artist's content? Like, is there, I guess, is there a benefit to sharing other people's content or is it best just to so, share your own? So, yeah, so the the like quick answer would be that sharing your own will likely benefit you more um that said like i definitely if i if there's another artist out there that I, I like really dig what they just posted i'll definitely like reshare it in my story share it to my story if it's possible um just if anything to like you know build a, that other artists will really appreciate it and the people following you might be like, oh, you're into like this type of work, that's cool. Like, you know, it's it's just a bit of kind of interaction and community building, but I don't think that sharing other people's work isn't necessarily going to make your account grow, um, especially if the goal of your account is is to be like the, the hub for like your work. I, I will, since she gave me permission to speak. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, the, the answer is, pretty much like halfway there, but the one little part that's missing uh, yeah. that I was leaning in towards was, since of course, Instagram runs on the algorithms. Yeah. If Instagram, if they, if I share, I'm interacting with the, the app itself. Does For the sure. app remember it so that whenever I post something original, it goes, hey, that person's helping us out as Instagram, as you are saying. Oh, I right. hear it, yeah. So, so we're gonna give you just a little bump yeah. You know I mean? Or you may not even know the answer to that because that may be a bit too. No, well, no, I, no, I think you're right in that any use of the app is, is probably going to benefit you, right? Like if you're reposting someone else's work, like you're on there, you're still, you're still like kind of interacting with other people, you're still sharing stuff. So you will get some sort of benefit as just like a user of the app, right? Um, that said, there other than the algorithm kind of thinking that you're active on it you should also think about like what what does that achieve in terms of your goals on on instagram so like it does sharing this person's work like if i share someone's work it's it's generally because that just because i think it's like coming from a place of like this is cool and i'm not looking to necessarily like grow my account or get followers from it it's more just like hey, this is cool. And like, I appreciate this person's work and I happen to have a good amount of followers. So I'm going to just like, you know, give them a shout out because, because I'd appreciate the same thing if someone else likes my work. Hopefully that answers it. Cool. Um, and then we are getting close to that seven o'clock mark. So I think we'll finish up with one more question, but if anyone else has more questions that weren't answered, please, please feel, re feel free uh, to reach out to um, the COSO staff at the info email. Um, we're happy to answer any questions that we can. And if not, 
we can send them over to Chris and Chris said he's I'm um, happy to uh, answer some questions as well. And we'll also be sending that outline um, that Chris will send over to me. We'll provide that to everyone who attended um, tomorrow morning. Um, so really quick, um, last question. I thought this was a good one. Um, Ann Emerson wants to know, how often do you actually sell work through Instagram? Yeah, um, quite a bit to be honest. Um, yeah, no, it's, I was before this, it's, it's funny you should ask before this, I was trying to go through my books because I do track like the, the channels through which I sell, like which gallery and Instagram's like one of the, the channels that I track. Unfortunately, my like Excel skills have severely degraded since I started painting full time. Um, but I will say that like anywhere from 25 to 50% of my sales right now are from people that have like found me on Instagram, which is like pretty crazy to, to, to say, because you would think someone just kind of like tapping on your teeny little image of your work. Um, you'd be shocked that it would lead to a sale. But like I said, if, if you're like being strategic about how you're using the links and you know, how you're connecting with people, you're, you're kind of like funneling potential collectors to, to places that they need to go um, in order to actually buy your work. But yeah, no, it's, I mean, in 2020, especially with galleries kind of not doing openings so much, um, Instagram was huge. I sold a ton of work on it. So, or through people that, I, you know, found me through it. I can do a few page. I can, I, I don't know if you need to go. I can do like one or two more. Oh, no, no, no. I'm happy to say, I just didn't know if you needed yeah. to go right at seven, but we can. Um, okay, no, I got nothing. Yeah, no, I we can, do a, we can, keep... can I do a little quick follow up just asking you, um, yeah, sure. what is the mechanism that somebody contacts you through in Instagram? Yeah, so I have um, through that like little link tree, they might follow me follow that to either like get my email to my website, blah, 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 or they'll send me a direct message. Um, the issue with, with direct message, when you start to get a lot of followers, it's like hard to keep up with direct messages because you get a lot of weird random stuff like junk mail essentially. But that said, I still do go through them. And if someone seems legitimately interested in like wanting to know about how to do a commission or uh, wanting to buy a painting that I posted, like I definitely am proactive in terms of following up with them. And, and then I usually switch to email. I'll usually say like, shoot me an email at blah, blah, blah with what you were thinking, you know, something like that. Great, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, and people, uh, just like a stray thought, people will also like comment on your posts. They'll be like, how much? Like just like rudely, like through, I don't know, just like randomly being like, how much is this for sale, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'll never really like post prices or anything in my comments. I'll just say like, oh, like send me an email if you're interested. That like weeds out people that aren't actually interested and also allows you to not have to be publicizing your credit if you don't want to. I mean, I don't know how, how much people care, but I'd rather not just have prices hanging out in the uh, comment section. Um, and if there is, I do think also like I avoid trying to have like, uh, the the number symbol in, in the comments I feel like that I don't know if I'm paranoid but that might also cause your post to kind of get throttled because they'll think it's getting like spammed with people being like I made ten thousand bucks with foreign exchange or whatever um and then I have another quick question too I thought this one was interesting from um Susan Valentine she wants to know if you use the post to Facebook option as well or if I guess if you just mostly stick to oh Facebook. yeah so uh, if I don't, but there's no good reason that I don't do that other than like, I just, I'm, I'm not on Facebook as much as I should be. Um, and I, that I've like kind of lapsed in, in having a good Facebook page. I, I will say I've heard from other people that like they do better on Facebook than Instagram. Um, that's just like not my expertise. So um, I have done it with like stuff that I find really important, but the amount of people looking at my Facebook compared to my Instagram is so like different that I just usually end up sticking with, with Instagram. But if you do have like a, if you do feel like you have like a good, healthy Facebook following and a, a page that you up, you keep up, like definitely sharing between them does, I've, it, it does like, you do get rewarded for doing that. 
um, fa because Facebook owns Instagram, they like when you kind of like connect the pages and, and keep things going in both ecosystems. Awesome, thank you. Cool. Well, thank you all for listening to me blabber for an hour. Hopefully it was useful. I'm like by no means a professional, but um, yeah, like I said, I was like kind of hitting my head against the wall for like five, seven years. Um, and then finally something happened where, where my account started to succeed really well. It's, um, but yeah, it wasn't through any, any like hacks or shortcut. I think it was just through those kind of three quality, personality, consistency. I think that stuff actually like truly is what made it happen. Great, so, hey, great presentation. Like, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bye. Chris. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris.